from Genuine Teaching and welcome back to my channel. Now, I want to put a little disclaimer at the beginning of this video. If you are not ready to start hearing things about back to school and lesson planning, I 100% understand. So, if you kind of want to just like save this video for like a month from now, I'm not going to be heartbroken about it because we all deserve our summer vacations to do whatever we want with them. I myself have been on summer vacation for a little over a month and I have about a month left, which is why I'm starting to kind of get into my back to school planning session. So again, if you are not ready for back to school lesson planning, I'll see you in August. If you want to see what I'm planning for the first week of school, go ahead and keep watching. This coffee is so good. I have not been going to Starbucks this summer, which is crazy for me. And I've been trying to find different ways of making things at home that I love. And this cold brew coffee is amazing. I use cold brew coffee, already pre-made, and then I use chocolate milk from Trader Joe's. I put it in my frother, I put it on top, and then I actually took Oreos like a whole bag of Oreos and just put them in my food processor and I have a jar full of them. Um, I call it my jar of dirt. I got a jar of dirt. It's amazing. I absolutely love it and it keeps me from going to Starbucks to get the chocolate cold foam cold brew, which is so good. However, when pumpkin cream cold brew comes back to Starbucks, I don't think I can recreate that. So I'm saving my money now so I can spend money then. That's just what we're gonna say. If you guys are still here in this video, you might just kind of be curious as to what I'm planning for the first week of school, or you might be like me. I really like to take the first month of summer vacation and get really, really bored and lazy and relaxed. Now, I do get all my doctor's appointments over with at the beginning of summer, so I can get to that point, but I've noticed that this summer I am not getting bored. And that's really great because I have so many hobbies. I think after like COVID and just quarantine and having to stay in your house for so long, I've gotten like a lot of hobbies that I do in my house. Like I literally do everything in my house and I'm not even sad about it. I even do my own nails at home. Now I make my own coffee. I work out from home. I play video games and watch YouTube and read books and hang out. It's just, I am definitely a homebody. So I have found that this summer is the first summer that I haven't been like itching to get out of my house because I absolutely love being in my house. With that said, uh, it has been a little bit harder to get into kind of a planning mode, but this is me and I don't know if I'm weird, but I mean, I know I'm weird, but <laughs> I don't know if I'm weird because of this. I like to spend most of the first month of summer, like I said, relaxing. And then towards the end of June, beginning of July, I get the itch to start doing stuff. And I think it's because I feel finally relaxed enough to start doing things slowly. So I'm not ready to go back to like full mode but I am ready to start doing some things. Another thing about me is I also like going into my classroom and I can get my keys next week, exactly. So next week on Tuesday, I can get my keys on July 5th, so I'll be going into my classroom and setting it up. I like to have my classroom set up and all of my copies and plans ready for the first two weeks of school by the middle of July. So if I can get that stuff done in like a week or two in July, then I go back into full on summer mode for the last two weeks of summer vacation. I literally go on a trip right before I'm required to go back for teachers and it's my favorite way to end summer. That way when it's that first quote unquote week back for teachers, I go back on a Wednesday. So I have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to get ready for the first day of school. That ain't gonna be happening because we're gonna have meetings, we're going to have pictures that we have to take for our IDs. We're going to have to go to our district in service, which is just a big convocation that we all get together and do. We're going to have meet the teacher night. And I really don't want to be scrambling around to get all that stuff done 
which is why I want to do it now. That way, when it's that week, I can be like, oh, there's a meeting today? Cool. What do you mean meet the teachers tonight? Oh wait, I'm already done. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, convocation ran an hour long. We only have an hour in our classrooms. That's fine by me. So I just, I get a lot of anxiety around this part of the summer because I know that a very, very, very busy season of teaching is coming up, which is back to school, which is one of the busiest times, if not the busiest. And I just, I know that I'm gonna be extremely tired just from teaching because we are restarting with brand new kids and teaching routines and doing teaching that we haven't done in a year and i know i'm gonna be very tired so if i can do things now when i'm a little bit more relaxed and i have a little bit more time on my hands i want to do that so that was a very long intro i went through and i lesson planned in my happy planner and I do have to say, I am loving this paper quality and I do lesson plan also in pencil so I don't have any bleed through or anything. I am using some old stickers that I cut using my Silhouette or my Cricut, I can do both. Um, the stickers are on my TPT shop and they were formatted for my old Erin Condren planner. They're okay for the happy planner, like they'll make do for the first week of school. I do want to make some generic stickers that'll just kind of fit in anything that I make. So that'll be a like fun crafty project that I do in the summer. But I just figured I'm gonna lesson plan in my lesson plan book. I don't have my master schedule, but like I know I'm teaching reading, writing, math, science, social life. I know that I'm teaching all those subjects. Now they may not be in the correct order, if our master schedule gets changed, but I like I can start planning for math because I know I'm gonna be teaching math, if that makes sense. So I already have my lesson plans written out and I made a bunch of masters. The beginning of the school year is crazy because like this amount of masters of copies, this is for one week at the beginning of the school year. This is usually like one month of copies for me, sometimes even like a whole quarter. So the first, week of school i'm doing a lot of paper pencil things mostly another reason because we don't have our computers yet and we unfortunately are not one-to-one -one. i have on average 30 students and i have 10 computers so i have to get really creative with how the students use the technology in the classroom but unfortunately um, we do have to do a lot of paper pencil stuff but once the school year gets started i do implement more technology we use a lot of interactive notebooks and whiteboards. Whiteboards are my friend, which is why I don't use a whole bunch of copies during the school year. But these are ready to go for the first week. And then when I sit down to plan for the second week of school, I already have a few things that I want to plan out there as well. So I planned the first week of school and I plan really detailed in my lesson planner, but I get really, really detailed in my slideshows. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and jump on over to my computer and I'm gonna walk through my slideshow, which is basically my lesson plans. This is my weekly slideshow. I'm not gonna lie, these slideshows do take quite a while to make when you are making them from scratch. I will go ahead and share all of the links that I have uh, to make these slideshows, but I do, other than the backgrounds, make the content on them from scratch using my curriculum and just coming up with things on my own as well. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through my very first week of third grade. Now I do have to say I have spent a lot of time on these slideshows last year, so it made creating slideshows for this school year so much easier. I know that some people like re-edit their same slideshow every single day. I highly suggest actually saving every single slideshow for every single week because like I said, it made planning for this year so much more easy and I absolutely loved it. So this is the slide that my students are gonna walk into on Monday morning. Now, it's gonna be the first day of school, so they have not been quote unquote trained to check the board when they come in. 
So I'm actually going to have them come in and we are going to stay in line. I know that sounds really weird, but especially in the first day of school, kids come from all over the place. They come in from recess, they come in straight from the cafeteria, they come in with their parents. So I just want them to know that on the second day of school, we all meet at a certain place. So as we're already lined up, we're just going to line back up, go outside with our backpacks, and I'm going to show them exactly where they're going to stand in the morning. And then we're going to come into the classroom. They are going to go ahead and find their seat. I'm just going to have name tags on their spots, probably with sticky notes because I do flexible seating. And any supplies that they have, I'm just going to have them keep it in their backpack. And the only thing I'm going to have them do is take out their lunchbox and water bottles and then start on an assignment at their seat, which is going to be a student questionnaire. And again, I want to just mention anything that I have links to will be in the description of this video. If I mention something in this video and you don't see a link in the description, I unfortunately do not have a link to that resource. So I just want to let you guys know that ahead of time. Our school does video announcements that get emailed to us every single day. So as we get them emailed, I just insert them into our weekly slideshow. However, you're gonna notice that it says check tags. Our students have transportation tags that every single student needs, whether they're a bus rider, a walker, a pickup, they need to have a transportation tag. And it's really easy to forget to check those kinds of things. So I literally do it during announcements first thing in the morning. When I'm taking attendance, I'll say, do you have your transportation tag and how are you getting home today? So having it in front of me on my slideshow makes it really easy to remember. So this page that is blurred out because there's student names on there, it is the exact classroom carpet that I have in my classroom. Now, I'm not sure if these are like my exact students. We did have a document where people placed students. However, movements happen over the summer, so I just kind of put kids in to kind of get an idea of how many students I'm going to have. However, I really like this rug because I can fit 35 students on here if I absolutely needed to. I've never had 35 students, but if for some reason I needed to fit that many kids on the carpet, I could. So this is just really nice because they know exactly where they sit and it matches our classroom carpet. Then I just have them do a share with a partner. Monday mornings, I always do something that you did over the weekend. And then I'm actually going to start off by introducing myself and sharing things about myself, like the things I really enjoy and my family. Now, for privacy reasons, I have their pictures covered because I don't have their permission to post them on my YouTube channel. However, when the kids see my slideshow, those pictures will not be blacked out. So it's just really nice to get to know them. And then we're gonna go ahead and sit in a circle and play a name game where they introduce themselves and say their favorite color. They go around in a circle and the person before them, they have to say their name and the person before them. And then by the time we go in the circle, at the very end, I go again, and then I have to say every single student's name. And that's also really helpful because that's how I remember their names by the last day of school. Now, when they come the second day of school with different outfits on, totally different story. And this is just kind of a prompt for me to remember that we're gonna play that game. These are my expectations. This slide is kind of for me to make sure that I go over really important expectations that have to be explicitly taught. Now, I do explicitly teach every expectation, but those things kind of come up as I teach them. But like lining up or being in ABC order or the hallway or where to line up in the morning or our attention getters, like those things have to be explicitly taught before we kind of get in through the day but like things like classroom jobs and where to turn in papers and how to get our pencils sharpened those ones come up throughout the day so i don't really write those down because like i said those ones just kind of come up we're gonna be playing a game called kind or trash it's something new that i'm doing this year because my big thing in my classroom is treat people with kindness my number one rule in my class is be kind now, we have other school rules, but our number one rule in our class is to always be kind. 
And then I'm going to read him a story called We're All Wonders. And then we're going to go through the story and just kind of point out things that are kind or unkind and then just kind of reinforce the things that we learned in kind or trash. And then usually we go to specials by them. However, I don't have my master schedule yet, so that could change. I'm kind of just planning it based on last year. I've taught at this school for six years, and for the past six years, our third grade schedule has been pretty similar year after year, so I'm not expecting a whole lot of change, but the nice thing about having a slideshow is you can change things around quite easily, and you don't have to like replan everything. So I go into flexible seating because, as you can tell, these are some pictures of my classroom and there's lots of different seating options for the students and I just want them to be able to explicitly go over some of those expectations and set them up for success. This is when we go over our supplies. Now I already have a lot of supplies for the students so I am going to, if they bring supplies that are very like personal to them, I will switch out, for example, a folder or a composition notebook. I have composition notebooks ready and labeled for all of my students. However, if they bring one that's decorated that they want to use, I'm obviously going to let them use that one, and I just won't give them one that I already made for them. Now, I was going to just not have a supply list because I have most everything for my students. However, I was asked by my admin to put a supply list together. So this is what I have on my supply list. It's pretty simple. I don't ask for a ton of supplies. I literally just ask for the basics that I use in my classroom. Now this is our center time. They normally have different centers that they work on every single day. However, for the first couple of weeks, we all do the same center on the same day and they're gonna be getting their book bags and doing read to self. So we're gonna build our stamina up for reading and also during this time is when I will be working with students on phonics screeners and just different one-on-one -on -one assessments that I'm required to give by my school. And then it's lunchtime. After lunch, we come back and we do math. I am actually going to be giving a pretest that I created this year for our module one in Eureka. And then we're gonna go into writing. I'm actually going to be giving them a handwriting assessment to just kind of see how they're writing their letters, if any students have reversals or how their handwriting is. So I just like to give that little assessment. And then we start with A and B print because I do want to teach them cursive later in the year and I just want to reinforce good handwriting at the beginning of the year and try to break some of those bad habits that they may be coming in with from the previous years. We're going to be doing all about me puzzles. Um, that's something new that I'm doing this year as well. We are going to be decorating a blank puzzle and they can use words or pictures and then they cut them apart and they're actually going to get in partners and put the puzzles together later on in the week. And then that brings me to the end of the day. I have a lot of stuff planned for the first day of school. Probably won't get to it all, but the great thing again, like I said, is I can just move sides around and push them off to different days or even different weeks. So on Tuesday, it's gonna be a little bit more like a normal day because the students already know where their assigned seats are. They already have their book bags. I have them read first thing in the morning. They already know where to put their backpacks and their lunch boxes and water bottles. And they already know how to pick flexible seating. However, the first few weeks, I'm gonna have them come to the floor first and then call them by colors and by rows to unpack their backpacks and get their book bags and get places to sit. That way it's not like a free for all at the beginning of the school day. Then again, I have my slide for announcements that will be put up later and then a share, which is what is your favorite memory from last school year? And then we go into reading. I was debating whether or not to start wonders this week and I was just, kind of trying to fill the day with get to know you things and I realized that I really want to start wonders the first week 
because Wonders has a really great story at the beginning, at least for third grade. I mean, I'm sure they have really great stories in all grades, but it's really great for introducing like characters and genre. And I think it would be a really great way to start the year off with a really fun story. And I already have so many get to know you activities throughout the week that I was just trying to fill time to push off content for no reason. So I'm just jumping into content on day two and I'm really excited because like I said, it's a really, really great story. Uh, these are the vocabulary words from Wonders. I just got this template from Pocketful of Primary and I typed in my own definition sentence and I actually found GIFs or GIFs to match every single vocabulary word. I made these when we actually were doing online learning and these were super simple to copy and paste from a few years ago. So again, make slideshows because when you spend more time on them, you can use them in the next few years. So these are my vocabulary words and I really love these slides. This is gonna be our center for Tuesday, which is writing a story based on writing prompt. And again, these are also from Pocketful of Primary and I use these year round. This is a center that stays the same every single week. I also love it because it is something that I can leave for a sub and the students know exactly how to do this with no problem at all. And they can work on this for about an hour and they stay really engaged with it. So I absolutely highly recommend these writing prompts. And then we go to lunch and when we come back, we are starting module one, lesson one of Eureka Math. So I just went through my Eureka Math book and I took the lesson and I broke it apart into different slides. I'm also using Magic of Math to supplement certain things. So for example, our objective from Eureka is working with equal groups and repeated addition. So that is exactly what I'm teaching and I am using the teacher manual for that. However, I got this little anchor chart from Magic of Math and I'm also using a few of their interactive notebook pages along with my Eureka Math. And I absolutely love that. This is also, a nice place for me to write down when I need to use certain manipulatives and it's just really nice. And again, you can see those are the interactive notebook pages that I have in the slideshow and it just makes it really easy to go through the slideshow and just remember things that I need to teach for the day. And again, prom set and exit ticket are from Eureka. Then I am going over nouns for the very first week. So this is a resource from Not So Wimpy Teacher. I really enjoy using her grammar units. And then this is an interactive notebook page that they're going to be putting in their reading notebook. And then this is when we're gonna revisit those All About Me puzzles, and they're gonna get in partners and put their puzzles together and get to know each other. And they're just gonna do that for as long as we can. So they might get to like two, maybe three people that they can work on their puzzles and get to know someone new. Then we're into Wednesday. You're gonna start seeing that things are very repetitive, which I absolutely love because the students love knowing exactly what to expect every single day. So same thing on here, announcements, a get to know you sharing activity, this one comes with a greeting because we have a little bit more time in the morning because we're kind of getting into the groove. It is the third day of third grade. And then we're getting straight into our reading, which is reading a page from, I don't know if they're, they're the workbook pages, but they're on Wonders and I use them for fluency and answering comprehension questions every single week and they review the weekly skill and I absolutely love them. Then we are going to be completing a story grammar marker from the story that we read in Wonders the day before. Story grammar marker is something that I've been working on. I actually have a video all about it. I'll go ahead and link it up in the cards in the corner if you guys are interested in that video. This is again another one of my centers that I teach the first few weeks of school because this is something that the students can use to retell any fiction story and I absolutely love it. Again, it's also really great for having a sub 
you're going to notice a lot of the things that I do in the first couple weeks of school are also my sub plans. I'd be happy to do a video on my sub plans as well, but it's just, I love teaching basically the sub plans in the first few weeks of school because you never know when emergencies happen. Then we have lunch and we come back and we work on lesson two of module one. Again, I got these warm up activities directly from the Eureka curriculum. Same thing with the vocabulary. And again, using magic of math to supplement a little bit with digital anchor charts as well as some photos of real life arrays. It was really nice to not have to create these images and we also use it for again our interactive notebooks then we're into thursday same old thing then we're going back into wonders and we are reading the weekly story and going really in depth with our discussions of the weekly story and going into the weekly skills and then if there's time we will go into partner reading and this is actually part two of story grammar marker which is the summary i like to spread out story grammar marker in two days at the beginning because the first day they're just filling out their graphic organizer on the front and the second day they are actually writing a summary of the story so i don't want to overwhelm them at the beginning of the school year that's why i break it up into two days after centers go to lunch come back do math we're doing lesson three and same thing content is from eureka with a little bit of supplemental materials from magic of math and problem set to exit ticket writing we're continuing with our not so wimpy teacher. I actually got a picture from Google and we're gonna make a list of nouns that the students see and we're gonna work on writing complete sentences. So we're gonna write a sentence together and then they're gonna write two sentences on their own. I'm using this checklist from Kelsey Nellen. Again, I have so many resources that I use and everything that I have, I will link best I can in the description. I really like this checklist. She teaches first grade, but I think this is a really great checklist to work on at the beginning of third grade as well. Again, to break those bad habits that some of them may be coming in with. And then this is from, I don't know. I can picture her face on Instagram. I know she's a fifth grade teacher. I will put her name up on the screen and link this in, again, the description below. But they're going to write three different sentences and make sure there's a correct capitalization and punctuation, and they're going to circle and label the nouns since that's what we're working on this week. Then we're gonna go into reading our bucket filler book and doing a sort on bucket fillers and bucket dippers. That's actually in my TPT store. So again, that'll be down below. Um, it's just something really nice to be able to talk about how we treat others. It's another great way to reinforce kindness in our classroom as well. Then we're on to Friday. I really like using morning meeting time to reinforce things. So like, ex for example, this one says, what can you do when you see someone is alone at recess or alone at lunch? It's also a really great time to have conversations with issues that are just naturally coming up in class or outside of class and you can just kind of talk about them and kind of work through those situations as a class. And then I really like doing really fun things on Friday, so we just are gonna do a game of charades. We're going to do a reading assessment. It's just an assessment that I used part of Wonders and I created, I used some of their questions and I also created my own questions kind of to like up the level of the questions because I feel like some of the Wonders questions are very low level questions and since we use proficiency scales, I want to give my students um, opportunities to demonstrate their understanding at a level two, three, and a four. So this year, I'm really trying to take my time and work on those assessments. And then for centers, we're going into Starbucks mode. We do ketchup and pickles. So if the students have finished all of their center work from that week, they get to do ketchup and pickles. So they get to basically either ketchup on things or pick an activity and we call it Starbucks mode because they're working quietly if they are finishing 
those activities. And then the ones that actually are done get to pick. Usually we just work with like math manipulatives. They can also get some extra computer time. Uh, we work on puzzles. They can do drawing. They're free to read or write. Um, it's really kind of up to them if they want to do a certain thing over something else. Um, for the most part, they're pretty good at picking activities. Um, but if they are able to pick activities, they don't have to sit in silence. Um, they do get to um, talk to the people that they are choosing to interact with. So for example, if they're choosing pattern blocks, four students can make pictures out of pattern blocks and they can talk at a reasonable level so the kids that are catching up on their work um, can do so with minimal distractions. Um, I also want to let you guys know that as they finish their work, they are able to go to the free choice centers. I don't like take that free choice center away from them um, for behavior or for if they don't finish their work, but then they end up finishing it within that time. I do allow them to go to a free choice center, which is kind of our fun Friday. And then math, we are doing our topic A quiz and then an equal group sort, just kind of review what we did for the week. And then we're not quite doing an assessment for nouns. We're gonna be doing that the following week on Monday, just because the first day of school is kind of not a huge content day because you're going over a lot of procedures and routines and it takes a whole lot longer to do every single thing but we're just going to be doing a read the room activity and I really like it because it gives kids the opportunity to walk around and answer questions um, either on their own or with a partner I allow them to choose during this activity. And then we're doing a fun activity called Saving Sam. I've heard people say Save Fred. It's the one with the gummy worm and they have to try to get a life preserver on it without touching it with their fingers or having him fall off the boat. And that is my slideshow for the week. We will see how much we can get through. Um, like I said, I enjoy having more than I need. It's also really nice because I have a ton of read alouds that I do as well. So honestly, this slideshow could take me like two weeks and I will go in and tweak things and push them back into week two if we don't get to everything, which again, making a slideshow, allows things to be extremely flexible and I like making them ahead of time because then I'm not making one every single day and that's just what works for me. So those are my lesson plans for the first week of school. I do want to make a part two to this video because like I said I like to plan two weeks in advance and this video is already kind of long so I'm just gonna have to split it up into different parts a lot goes into the first week of school for planning so there's a lot going on i'm probably going to have to move things around um, whether we have to do testing or whether this just isn't enough time to do all of it which is really great because i can just move things around and be flexible again i plan in pencil i highlight things when they're done and then i just move my slideshows around if I have to push things back a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do want to make more plan with me videos this school year. I wanna make a big emphasis on making those types of videos to share like realistic planning. A lot of the planning is going to be done in my classroom. I'm just doing it at home right now just because it is summertime. So I don't know if you guys like the layout of me walking you through my computer screen because I can lesson plan that at school, but then I could film the video at home. But I also want to share some overview shots of my planner because there's some weeks that I wanna decorate my planner with fun stickers that I make. So I don't know, let me know what you guys are most interested in. Like I said, I will try my very best to get as many links in the description below as possible. And if it's not in the description, I unfortunately don't have a link to it. So. Thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you're in the middle of your summer. I know that all of us go back at different times. Even here in the United States, a bunch of us go back at different times, but I know that there are people in different countries that have a totally different teaching schedule. So I can't just blankly say happy summer because we're not all on summer break and it's not even summer in every single country that people watch this video from. So 
wherever you are, whatever time of day, whatever time of year it is. I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy teaching. Bye friends.